was by Russell here that I would have the chance to give you a two-hour lecture in terms of safety, so I thought I'd start from the beginning. Uh, well, I think you're well aware of our heritage when it comes to safety, and most likely you've probably also heard about our vision for the future, uh, a vision of the crash rate future. However, when will that occur? It's quite difficult to say. So we set up an ambition, and that ambition is that by 2020, no one should be seriously injured or killed in an involved car. Uh, this may sound impossible. Is it really reachable? Uh, for us, working with this at all is much, much more than that, because this is a matter of your attitude towards a very, very serious issue on our roads. Because what this really means is that we do not accept the fact that you risk your life with them just by transporting yourself back and forth to work, back and forth to school. What is even more important is that by having this ambition and by having this attitude, we can spend our time not arguing if to do something, but arguing and discussing how to do things. And that is really the key for creativity and innovation. Of course, this does not come by itself. You need to have a very structured working method. And this is the working method that we use. We look at real customers, and real cars, and real crashes. And this is not something that we started yesterday. This is something that we've done for decades. So we have our own unique database in Sweden that contains more than 42,000 accidents involving all cars with about 70,000 articles involved in these these crashes, both uninjured as well as injured. So we can track over time how well we perform. This data that we use from the real world, I should mention, we are also using today uh, on-road driving data. We monitor drivers in their cars. So we are not only catching data on accidents, but also on what we call incidents. I think you've all been in situations where, oh, that was a close call. I almost hit that car, or that car almost hit. So by adding cameras, sensors to the cars, uh, we can actually, uh, and also record all this, we can uh, sort of study both uh, the normal driver behavior as well as look at incidents and not only accidents. And this basically forms the input for how we set up our targets and our requirements, our internal requirements, which is the foundation for how we develop new technology. So we set up a safety requirement, and then we ask ourselves, what kind of technology do we need to develop in order to address this issue in the real world situations? We create prototypes, both virtual as well as real. We test them in our laboratories and on our computers. We put the technology uh, into production, and then we collect the data again. So it's a closed loop kind of working methodology. And this working methodology is not actually anything unique. It's used in any process type of industry where you want to produce uh, errors in your production. And it was invented by an American called Deming, I believe, that implemented this during the 70s. So this is sort of the approach we have when it comes to working with it. Um, this graph shows uh, injuries per billion kilometers. And this is data from our own database. In Sweden, we know where our current vehicles are in terms of risk of, and here we're talking moderate to severe to fatal injury. Uh, and what we add here as a measure is per billion driven kilometers, which means that we can take both the protective safety technologies into account as well as the preventive or active safety technologies into account. The new XC90 is targeted to be uh, on the track <coughs> that we have towards our ambition. Uh, but what's even more important with the XC90 is that we started from a clean sheet of paper, as you heard before, uh, with the XC90, which gave us unique capabilities. So we have further improved the technologies, safety technologies that we've had uh, in the past. We've added a number of world-first technologies addressing new areas. But more importantly, we've also prepared the platform and the car for the next 
concepts in safety technologies. So you have connectivity. Uh, we are launching the first steps when it comes to autonomous or semi-autonomous type of driving. So the XC90 is very, very important for us in that, uh, taking the next steps with our coming cars. Well, coming back to the XC90, uh, as I said, we started with a clean sheet of paper. Uh, the old XC90, when it comes to structure, was quite unique. We introduced uh, ultra-high strength steel or boron steel in that car. It had about 7% boron steel content in its body. The new XC90 is close to 40% or on steel in its body, so the red parts here represents that. And you see that it's located around the occupant compartment. Uh, the old action X90 we introduced our unique uh, patent and front structure. With the new X90, we've actually taken one taking that one step further. So we have a new patent. It's more or less the principle is that we have in the old X9, we have a three-leg support here. We have what we call it double three-leg support. So in front of crash situations, the forces are distributed around the occupants and also uh, transfers the uh, the, uh, uh, the car itself. But what we've added here is also a little path through the tunnel. Uh, when we started to look into and this is again based on our work towards our vision. We looked into our database, what type of injuries we see in our cars that have not really been worked at, and what, where, where do we have uh, injuries that are on the same level over, over a period of time. We found that uh, spinal injuries was one such type of injury. And we started to look into what kind of events do these injuries typically occur uh, and what we found is that a lot of times where it's most common is when you run off the road. Uh, this is quite a common type of accident scenarios, usually at high speeds. And we started to ask ourselves, okay, how can we do anything about this? What's the mechanism behind uh, you getting spinal injuries in these types of situations? And just to show you uh, what happens here is a test when we ran in XC90 80 kilometers an hour off the road into a ditch and onto an embankment. Uh, what we will see here on the interior pictures is that there's quite a lot of movement as you leave the road. And what happens then is that you're, you're moving around and you may actually have quite a weird Uh, and 
uh, was with a colleague of mine who found this rubber coaster at an amusement park. So it's basically an industrial robot. You put a seat in there, a little restraint, and uh, a dummy, and then we can put the same signal that the car or the movement of the car into that robot and mimic uh, the movement, uh, and then design uh, the restraint system accordingly. Another world first in the new XC90, and again looking at real world collisions where you see serious injuries and fatalities is intersections. And uh, we've been you know, leading the pack when it comes to water brake technologies, and here we're taking yet another step, adding a new scenario, which is auto brake intersections. <coughs> and the scenario here is if you're making a left turn into, an, into the path of an upcoming vehicle, the ball ball will actually automatically brake. And what's with these situations is that you may actually need quite a small brake intervention to uh, avoid a very, very severe type of event. And this is a world first. And this is actually standard in the, the old new XC, XC9. Uh, pedestrian detection. We've had this for quite some years <coughs> in our cars. Uh, we've added nighttime performance to the XC9. So we're taking an um, um, improvement there. This is also standard in the old new XC90. We have bicycle detection and auto brake, warning and auto brake. Uh, here we've added another scenario, and that's when bicycles are crossing your path. And this is also standard in the old new XC90. Uh, we have an optional uh, feature, which is rear collision warning. Uh, there we will uh, tighten the belts. Uh, when a car is approaching from behind, and there is a risk of an impact, your belts will be tightened, and after impact, we will actually lock the brakes as well, so you're not being pushed into uh, another scenario. As I mentioned before, um, we're starting to take steps towards offering autonomous driving in different situations. We actually are right now equipping 100 XC90s uh, with technology for research project in Gothenburg called Drive Me, which uh, by 2017, we'll have these cars running with normal customers of ours on the streets of Gothenburg and on a specific stretch of road, they will be able to drive uh, completely autonomously. However, the all new XC90 have uh, a low speed, I would say, semi autonomous type of technology called pilot assist. It operates up to 33 or 30 miles an hour, and basically, uh, we're using uh, the forward looking sensors, the radar on the camera, the, the lane markings, and if you have a car in front, the car uh, uh, will uh, control the, uh, the speed and the distance to the car in front, but also the steering. So it will follow the car in front of you. And you may actually be able to, to try this out yourself here if you manage to get into a traffic here in LA or something that I'm uh, we also offer 360 bird's eye view using cameras. Uh, we have uh, added to our park assist pilot with added scenarios. So you have not only perpendicular parking where the car will assist you with the steering, you control the uh, accelerator and the brakes, uh, but the steering is handled by the car. Uh, the, it will also help you if you want to leave a perpendicular parking spot. Um, what's good with that is that it actually enables you maybe to find a smaller spot than you would choose yourself because the car will assist you. And we also added uh, a scenario where the car will assist you back into a parking space like this. Uh, 